Okay, so hello everyone, ladies and gentlemen. This is Balin speaking from Rollout IT. Uh, as for me, very shortly, uh, I do project management and I participate actively in sales and marketing as well at the company. And uh, let me shortly introduce uh, our company so that you can have uh, a basic idea who we are and what we do. So Rollout IT uh, was established in 2018. Uh, we do end-to-end -end mobile development, web development, and mobile development. Uh, and for about a year or so, we've been doing outstaffing, outstaffing developers to projects and other companies. As we think having a community is uh, really important, here we are to learn and share some thoughts and our experience with each other. Uh, we believe quality and hard and smart work always wins, so let's see who we got here today. So here we have Balaj, Neymat, and Mihai Parlak. Say hi to them, I know <laughs> you can't uh, hear us. Okay, so they are two great senior developers who are the two participants of today's discussion. Uh, and yeah, just to remind everyone in case you mixed this webinar uh, with another one, uh, today's topic is how to kick off your international career. So Mihai and Balaj will share some thoughts and experiences on this topic. So let me uh, introduce our speakers shortly, and then we can uh, let we can get started with the questions. So Balaj is from Hungary. He's the founder of Rollout IT. He has 10 years of experience in software development, the senior uh, web and mobile developer. He's experienced in React, Vue, Node.js, uh, Node React Native, but nowadays he's focusing more on the business side and team management rather than just doing actual development. He has been a tech lead in international projects for several years, then became the CTO of an American agency before he founded his own. Uh, he worked multiple times in San Francisco on site with startups and small medium sized businesses as a software developer consultant. He launched his own international project called Digital Nomad Hungary, focusing on the digital nomads coming to the country in, two, in 2018, 19, sorry, yeah, it was in 19. Okay, uh, so that's his Polash. As for Mihai, Mihai Parlok, he's from Romania. Uh, Mihai has been working as an engineer for about uh, 12 years now, mainly with Java and a lot of other tech stacks, e.g. Node.js and Angular. He's really passionate about complex projects because for the last couple of years, he has gained sufficient experience to be able to make uh, wise architectural decisions and design solutions from both a technology tech perspective, but also infra infrastructure. He really enjoys providing end-to-end -end solutions as well. So yeah, uh, in a nutshell, uh, that's for Balaj and Mihai. And um, let's get started. So we're gonna do some kind of a round table discussion today. I have eight, nine topics and questions to cover. And then uh, just FYI, uh, in the end, you will have a chance to ask questions in the comment sections and uh, we're gonna answer them. Uh, yeah, and just another key note, I will try to keep a schedule today. So each, question will, like Balaj and Mihai both will have about two minutes per question, but sometimes, of course, I can let them talk a little bit more, but I will try to keep a schedule. Okay, so let's jump in. My uh, first question, just to get started, uh, and yeah, this is for Balaj first. Uh, how did you start your journey as an IT professional? And how come you decided to be a generalist or a specialist or just share some thoughts about yourself, please? Uh, okay, so at first, thank you for the introduction, Balint, and uh, hello everyone, uh, I'm Balaj. I'm sorry. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I thought that uh, Balint, you had a comment. Uh, so, uh, how I started my journey in, as, as, as a software developer, uh, after having my computer science degree in, in 2010, I worked uh, in, a, in a multinational company, uh, in, like a local team in Hungary for like four years. And uh, in 2014, uh, I, 
I, uh, I joined an, an American uh, project-based agency. Um, actually, while being a developer, I'm always testing the market, meaning I, I go for interviews and, and uh, 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 checking the opportunities mostly to, to get to know how much is my value uh, in, and that's how I met the, the American company. And they made it clear for me uh, that this is not an actual employment job, how I thought from the job description, but it's project-based. Uh, however, in that time, the Hungarian tax authorities introduced a very great structure for self-employment. And I was thinking, why would I not try it out? Uh, uh, worst case, I will go back to, to the company who I'm, I'm leaving and I can do the mobile development uh, in, in the regular team where I uh, became a mid-level developer. Um, but, for, but actually it's never happened. So since then uh, I'm, I'm working as a, uh, as a contractor. Uh, for a few years, uh, I was a front-end and mobile developer in international projects. Um, and, uh, um, and after a few years, I became a tech lead, meaning I was overseeing a few projects um, architectural wise, uh, helping new team members to join, doing recruitment. Um, and uh, I started to build my profile on, on uh, freelance.com. Uh, so I get in contact with a few uh, companies from Switzerland. And actually the American company and the Swiss company gave me a uh, lots of projects. So I thought in the beginning that uh, uh, I don't know how many work I'm gonna have as, as, a, as a contractor, but honestly, I had much more than I could handle. So I needed to tell no uh, a lot of time. And then how the American uh, company was growing, I was growing with them. Uh, finally, I, I became the CTO of the company. Um, before uh, I became that, I lived uh, as a digital nomad for one year. Uh, we visited uh, uh, Peru, Mexico, uh, USA, Canada with my wife uh, in that year. And, and while traveling, I was working uh, as, as a senior software developer and tech lead um, for projects, just like I did uh, from Hungary. Uh, and then uh, 2018, uh, I, I created my own company and started to uh, started to build teams um, for 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 awesome projects uh, from from the freelance network uh, which I already had at that time, and I'm still doing that. Um, I'm I'm in my company. I have a lots of things automated, so I I still do have a lots of time to do development. Fortunately. And nowadays I do VueJS mostly on the front end uh, uh, and Node.js on the back end. And I'm not doing as much mobile than in the beginning, uh, but I, I, I still try to keep my technical skills sharp. So that's maybe in a nutshell, and I can hand it over to you, Mihai. Hey, uh, first of all, thanks Bal uh, Balint for the intro. Um, well, what can I say regarding to your question is that, obviously started out like everyone and just as a i mean started out with a simple php mysql project and afterwards build it build it up um, progressively with java with uh, other technical stacks that i won't necessarily go into because there are a lot uh, and afterwards i it's simply a matter of patience uh, perseverance and uh, I don't know, being a lot open to communication and also something that Balash also mentioned, uh, either reaching out uh, to various companies or going into discussions, trying to maintain uh, a healthy relationship with them and so on and so forth. That's how all it right. basically all started. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh... What are the typical paths to be able to grow your art IT profile, uh, like with good references? So did you try any alternative platforms or like Upwork or you went for agencies or how was it basically? Um, I can take the first answer. So for me, honestly, the best projects came from agencies. I had mm -hmm. a few good projects from uh, uh, from freelance.com, as I said, uh, mostly from Switzerland. 
Um, those were not bad, but typically like small startup projects and uh, uh, some, you know, tools or, or, or web applications what the actual company wanted to outsource. I was not that involved into, into the core of the application. I didn't get much of a know-how. However, when I worked uh, with, with agencies, I had the chance to work three times in San Francisco on site for a few months. Uh, and one of them, I did a native iOS application for, for Haylets. Uh, it was also a startup scaling up and uh, uh, we did a, an Apple featured application which is basically the most serious award from Apple, what your application can get in the App Store. Um, and, you know, putting all these into your, your profile and CV, um, going to make your profile stronger and stronger. Uh, and then, and then uh, you just need to be cautious to always try to find a, a project which is going to be the next, you know, badass project or, or something uh, what you would be proud of. And yes, as Mihai said, it's always uh, very important to, to do the hard work and keep your client happy and, and keep the team happy because that's how I got uh, good referrals and recommendations sometimes. Um, so that's how I did it. I didn't have much of a success in, in, in you know, freelance platforms like Freelance Com or Upwork. Uh, I built my private reference and uh, private uh, like reference list and profile and I sent it out to, to the further projects and clients who I want to apply to. Yep, I think that's... that's okay, uh, perfect. Awesome. And we're going to get to the topic that you just mentioned, Balaj, like uh, whether it's easy or not to get a new project or whether someone can, you know, uh, be left without a project because I think that can happen. Okay, how about you, Mihai? Well... <sighs> There aren't necessarily any typical paths. I mean, it can be different for each and every individual. Um, it's not necessarily, there isn't any guide on how to do it. So you should basically follow your, follow your instinct. If uh, it feels right with a particular client, for example, to push forward and give it your best and something like that, yeah, go for that. Obviously good things might come out of it, but it's a gamble. You may never know. That's why I don't emphasize on existing a, an actual path or anything like that. And regarding agencies uh, or platforms, yeah, obviously Upwork or even people I know actually use LinkedIn directly. So mm -hmm. in terms of, because it's not necessarily about the platform, I think it's about a platform to be able to reach out and to find stuff because honestly you can find something even in, on facebook if you try hard enough or of have course. luck so yeah but going back just a little bit uh, on the typical paths i think just going uh, the difference between a generalist and a specialist it, it's a thin line if you ask me and uh, i think the best option is to actually do what interests you more not to aim to become a generalist or specialist in a certain direction if that particular technology stack or framework or language uh, is in your liking go for that and that's it it doesn't matter if you're doing only programming or operations or infrastructure it doesn't really matter as long as it's something that makes you happy and you thrive learning that Right, that's right. That's my uh, my thought on it. Thank you, thank you. The next one is my favorite, honestly. So, is it easier to start your international career today, or it was much easier five years ago? What do you think, Balaj? Let me hand it over to Mihai first. Uh, okay, okay, we we can switch <laughs> occasionally, <laughs> and you will uh, still have some time to think yeah. about the answer. Okay. To be honest, I don't think it matters. Mm, comparing today to five years ago, the only difference that I see at least is the, the speed that technologies evolve and frameworks evolve. Uh, the need for finding specialists or people willing to learn something and improve it or work with it is the same as it was five years ago. 
I don't see a change in that. Maybe the market, if you look, if you look at the actual market, yeah, actually the demand is higher now, if you look at it, especially considering uh, COVID situation and all of that context. Mm -hmm. So I don't really see a difference. Uh, maybe a small difference would actually be the platforms that we have today. I mean, actually, LinkedIn was five years ago, but nobody uh, comprehended the thought that this would be possible to, to use LinkedIn as a socializing platform in order to find more jobs, or it was just basically an online profile which HR people used to recruit, but not for people to actually search for jobs more. Yeah, I think actually... Um... The it's for, so so to, for me I think it's easier, and mm -hmm. and exactly the demand is higher. I think it's just getting more and more popular and and easy to understand, like easier comparing how I felt five or maybe seven years ago, how how companies can onboard someone remotely. We have a lot of tool for that, like. Five years ago, I'm, I'm not even sure that we used any advanced chat tool. Now, you know, everything is integrated with, with for example, Slack. And um, um, it, there are much more tool and platform to, to build uh, a remote team, uh, which, which, can, uh, um, which can do, you know, all, all the job, uh, what you need with reliable professionals. And, and I think it's not about the developer, but I feel that uh, from the company side and from remote teams, yeah, the demand is much higher. I got much more requests to, to, to join projects. Uh, I see more advertisement, like far more than I saw five years ago, even on Facebook, you can meet a lot of paid ads uh, to join like cross borders, remote teams. I haven't mm -hmm. seen those like three years ago or five years ago. You needed to put more effort in at that time, um, I think, to find opportunities. Now you have much higher chance that the opportunity is going to find you, or if you 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 just need to be cautious to to find the good opportunities and something which is a great fit for you, because there is a lot of opportunity nowadays in the remote market. Yes, probably it often happens that the developer cannot decide whether to take or not something and they can, you know, pick something wrong. Okay, uh, what also, are the... Yeah, yeah, go Sorry ahead. to interrupt. I also wanted to add something to what Balash was saying. I think actually a big difference uh, today from uh, comparing today with five years ago is the fact that companies actually search more nowadays uh, to somewhat above mid-level but more senior like and i don't think big companies at least or even startups to be completely honest don't have the patience in uh, getting a junior or someone who's fresh off the benches of a university or something like that and committing to growing that uh, those people up that's at least what i tend to see nowadays absolutely as a salesperson i experience the same so out of a thousand uh, job posts, there's like 10 or 5 junior positions, honestly. And yeah, rarely mediators. So 95% just seniors. That's what they want in a remote setting. At least that's, that's what I can say. Okay, can we jump to the next one? Yep, I think. Or any, any additions? Okay, okay. So what are the must-have skills if someone wants to enter the international market or get better and better international projects? What do you think, guys? Um, yeah, I think one of the most important is is, uh, is the English, like a good enough level of English. You don't need to be you know, perfect and, and uh, don't think that there is really high expectations, but you should be able to communicate your thoughts and arguing and speaking up. Uh, that's, I think, one of the number one. Um, the other one is, I would say, more about the mindset. So you would like to do something really good. 
and and being passionate for something like um when 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 developers asked me how i became a mobile or front-end developer i used to tell them that uh, uh, it's in my personality i just like when in the in in like in the morning there is a blank screen and on the on the evening i was able to put lots of content and 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 make things happen in the application um that's 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 what uh, you know i really like to do and i was always passionate about and if i found bugs then um i i went and and refactor and do all the things which needed to uh, do to to um make it better not just because of you know tasks and tickets and expectations but uh, just because i i i try to keep the quality high uh, and that's uh, something which is valued um, in each in each project um, and besides these two like the good english and something what you try to be really good at it i would say that uh, it's important to be able to manage your own time because if you work remotely no one going to be there to you know uh, ask something about your schedule everyone will be interested in the deliverables and to to make sure that you complete what you are committed to um and i would say after after some time the the cautiousness which i already mentioned it's it's also important because you need to be able to identify what you would like to reach what's your goal and sooner or later you will experience that you need to say no sometimes or you need to jump to another project because the current project is not something what you learn a lot so mm, it's a uh, it's another skill, probably a soft skill, which which is I would say a must have to be able to grow uh, in in the international market. Thank you. Okay, Mihai. From my side, I think um, the bare minimum of skill set you need to have is, as Balash also said, communication. I don't think the language is that important as long as you make yourself understood because a lot of people might know English, but they don't know how to communicate. So I think communication oh, yeah. is the best, the most important skill. Um, besides that, obviously teamwork, cooperation, all those kinds of things related to soft skills. Uh, and I don't know, and the, the technical skill set to put it as, um, as that, but I want to hyphen that it's not mandatory to be 100% an expert in Java or 100% an expert in any other technology or framework or tech stack. Um, what I think it's important is that you need to have the drive and you need to be passionate about your work, as I mentioned in uh, a couple of minutes ago. Because if you have that drive, obviously you will have the interest to actually read articles, be up to date with uh, what's changing in the tech world, uh, be up to speed in picking up where uh, you, ha you might have some uh, gaps and stuff like that. I, th I think those are the most important things. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Um, the next one is, should I be a generalist or a specialist to find projects easier? And please, if we have, you know, a junior here or not, uh, please define a specialist and a generalist, just to make it sure everybody gets the question. I'd like to go first on that because okay. I think it's yep. an interesting, a really, really interesting topic. Um, so a specialist in my point of view is someone who's um, only knows the ins and outs of a particular thing let's say java let's take actually let's actually take java for instance mm, being a specialist is not bad if you have a particular problem that nobody might be able to solve it that guy definitely will solve it because he's a specialist but that's all the thing that those are all the things that he can do because if, he, if he's a specialist and on in only one direction he he won't be able to catch um, some things maybe that uh, are in a bit more in, on the end-to-end -end area so not concerning only the back end of an app 
a generalist is someone who knows bits and bits and pieces of uh, mm. all the pieces of the puzzle. And I think that's a person who can actually excel more compared to a, to a specialist. And the reason why I say that is you, you can't be a specialist in all the technology stacks. You can be a full stack developer and say you're a specialist in all the items. You know, 100% Java, Angular, let's say, or React or whatever front end framework of your choosing. And uh, also Kubernetes or AWS and Terraform and a lot of things. I don't think there's something like that out there. If it's something, if someone is like that out there, it's someone who's like godlike. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> for the expression, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's my reasoning at least. So obviously I will, I will say that um, being a generalist is a lot easier because let's say there's nothing in the market for someone who knows Java, but there might be something for someone who knows Kubernetes or AWS. Okay, I'm a journalist. I know bits and pieces of that. Their requirement is something they need to do this, 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 and that. Okay, I have an idea on how to do those things. Actually doing it shouldn't take me that long if I Google is my friend. If I need to know a particularity of something, I can find it in a couple of minutes or a couple of hours. Yeah, I tend to agree, actually. Um, Mihai, am I fine if I continue? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah, please go on. Sure. Okay. So I would say uh, if you, if so, I see that uh, there is also demand for, <coughs> for specialists. For example, Salesforce specialist is something which is really, really, uh, a lot of company are, are interested in uh, to, to be able to onboard someone who, <coughs> Uh, who's great in Salesforce integration. And I would say it's a, it's a fairly specialized uh, domain. And usually what I experienced that uh, specialists could have a, a, a higher cut, uh, but, uh, uh, but less opportunities. So they might not can, uh, you know, find as many opportunities or as many projects if they are not open to to learn and and uh, became a generalist uh, uh, slow slowly. <coughs> uh, in in terms of, so I, I would say the most important things besides generalist and, or specialist is to know the basics. Like I experienced a lot of time, someone came into an interview that he is a Wu specialist or uh, a full stack generalist. And uh, knowing the basics means that you can find great solutions, you can figure out problems or bugs which are which, which are complex and 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 you're like truly understanding what you are doing, not just uh, uh, you know finding something on Google or or being able to make it work. Um, so, so I would say if, if, if you know the basics, you can be a specialist in something if, if, if you learn that and you think that this is what makes you passionate. Uh, but you also can grow to be a, to be a generalist. Um, and, and I think you're going to have a lot of opportunity for both. But I tend to agree with Mihai. Uh, nowadays, like generalist people who can, who can uh, see through multiple systems and and being able to be uh, like valuable or produce value or deliver in, in different domains mm -hmm. um, is 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 a, is there is a bit higher demand for them uh, because companies sometimes are not uh, interested in hiring a lots of specialists but rather hiring a few generalists uh, it it makes the project more balanced. Um, that's uh, that's how I see nowadays. Anything to add, Yai? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, how senior should someone be to start? What do you think? So, is it required to have minimum five plus years? You can start an international <laughs> career even at day one. It doesn't I don't see 
there's no gen there's no cookbook for this mm -hmm. so it depends on each and everyone's opportunity to be more precise mm. um, I, I mean I, i'm not uh, so i would say if you on day one uh, I would truly recommend to to find uh, like a local company where you can easily connect to the team, understand the roles, understand the processes, be able to ask questions easily, or just you know being the 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 senior developer in the in the next table and uh, grab a coffee together and and ask things informally. Because uh, if if uh, if this is your day one in, in an IT project, programming is just one of the challenging part. Um, honestly, I would say that uh, uh, I'm I'm glad that I kicked off my remote career being a strong mid level developer, uh, and even in our remote projects at uh, Rollout IT. Uh, we we are we we rarely can onboard uh, someone junior. We can onboard it if if the team is big enough and we have um, in, we have the capacity for hand holding and for mentoring because remote mentoring and and uh, and uh, make sure that it's a win win situation for the junior developer and for the company and for the team uh, is not that easy. Uh, comparing sitting together in in, in a room and uh, uh, working together on site um, yeah that's that's how I see it obviously I agree with what you're saying and yeah that's the best way to start it off mm, but that's I mean that five years ago was easier to achieve and I think it was better uh but nowadays um i think people are rushing into things a lot of them uh and it's not 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 everybody has a good outcome out of that i mean i saw people who had a, good, a really good outcome out of the out of it and they've grown to be really really good professionals in what they're doing but it really depends on the individual if you ask me. Okay. All right. All right. Um, I'm curious, do you prefer working in a cross-country remote team setup or with a team with fellow local developers? Balash, what's your answer? What are the pros and cons? You yeah, can yeah. Them? Yeah. I mean, that's an interesting question. I would say what I can say is only of my own experiences. So it's very uh, subjective and maybe someone has, you know, experience with, with like fully opposite, uh, from, from fully opposite angle. Um, I, I know excellent local teams in Hungary. Um, and if I would like to, I could find a great project and a great team probably within a month or, or, or even shorter time. Obviously, I can find a project or a team which I could join in a week or something like that or, or even less. But a good team or great team and great project, I would say within a month. And uh, yeah, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm, I, I have very, very limited knowledge about the Hungarian market. I'm, I'm working as a remote developer in the last like seven years or even more. Um, how like pro and cons from that time and what I experienced, I, I would say uh, in a cross cultural team, I usually experienced uh, more direct and more clear communication because that's something what you need to do if you work here remotely, uh, working on site, you know, there is more uh, contact, um, there is more time to chit chat, to talk. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other type of interactions, non-verbal interactions. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's just a different, I'm not saying which one is better or, or but, but I, I experienced more clear and, and straightforward communication, which I like personally uh, in, in like remote cross-border cross or cross-cultural teams. 
Um, and one thing which always attracted to me working remotely because uh, um, I was not judged by, you know, first impression based on my clothes, uh, how is my weight or how is my outfit. Um, I, I, I experienced a bit like, like, um, um, like being treated as, as a senior IT professional who is joining the team remotely to, to do his best uh, to help out and to, to work together. And I gave the, like the same respect immediately for all the other teammates. Um, and, and sometimes it was very, very inspiring. Uh, could be the exact same in local team, don't get me wrong. I have not much you know, experience to compare, but these two I could highlight that I, I, I really like in like cross-border, cross-cultural teams. Thank you. Mihai? I think it's nice to work across uh, borders with team teams across borders. It's nice to also see their methodologies of working, their concepts, their culture. I mean, it's a lot of diversity, obviously, but I also agree with uh, what Balash said that working locally has its perks, obviously, as well, because um, with a local team, you bond differently you can actually bond because you can maybe meet up, you can go for a coffee, a drink, a beer, I yeah. don't know, something like that. You can do some team outings. Uh, but I think each of one of each and uh, one of them are nice. So it's good to experience both of them. I, agree. I don't uh, really have any preferences in that direction because I've worked with uh, either cases. But uh, yeah. What's the case currently with you guys? It's mixed. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, uh, it's pretty nice. I mean, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't have any preferences if it uh, were up to me. I'm comfortable either way. Good for you. <laughs> I think it's lucky. And Balas, for you? At this moment, I do not work uh, anyone in Hungary. I I have a, uh, my like the current project is from the USA, and the mm -hmm. good thing is that two guys came here visiting Vienna, and then came to Budapest, so we can meet uh, oh. at least that like this small portion of the team. Um, but but yeah, I I, I do work remotely only uh, at this moment. Okay, okay. I was just curious. So my final question actually is how risky is this? So am I going to have the next project for sure or I may have zero income for months? What do you think? What's your experience? I can, I can start. Um, I never had any month in my contractual career. Uh, when I had no project to work on, unless I, I wanted it. Like if I wanted to be free or, or, or not working as much or take a break, I, I did that. Um, however, I would say it's, uh, it's risky and it's definitely very different than being employed. Um, and, and you need to think about personally about your your situation and what's the best for you um, considering taxation you know work-life balance uh, children family situation and a lot of other factors um, one things which I do is that I, I I never burn bridges meaning I I really try to put a lot of effort and work in in what I'm doing and uh, and as, as Mihai said in one of the questions, uh, if the users and the client is, is happy, um, then, uh, um, then there is, you know, small chance that, uh, that you're not going to be able to continue with them. Or after a while, you are going to have a lot of happy client in your past. And if you feel that you need some more work, you can just shoot a few messages 
and mm -hmm. I always have a client from my past who who has a project scaling up or or a situation where they could use my skill set. Um, yeah, that's 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 I think uh, my short summary for that question. Sounds very smart and practical. Thanks. <laughs> No, I, I mean it like uh, relationships and connections and, and not burning the bridges. I think that's a very good approach. Uh, thank you. Mihai? Uh, my thoughts are on uh, <laughs> what Balash said also. Uh, what I also wanted to bring is that obviously, yeah, you can have periods of drought or you can have periods where... Um, you're overflowing with invites for interviews, for discussions, for chats, for opportunities, and so on and so forth. It really depends also, it really depends on how you build your profile, a previous question that you've asked. Um, it really depends on that and it really depends on the progress that you've had uh, during your career from my perspective and the relationships you've kept after after each and every project or company or anything like that, because people talk, they recommend. And uh, even though we live in the, in a really digital area, I think it's still something, uh, a big factor in this is uh, the old chit chat when trading or something like that. Uh, so yeah. Uh, other uh, other advices I or thoughts or ideas around this I'm not sure because everything we've talked so far I think uh, adds up into this right right okay any more comments or thoughts or anything that you would share that we didn't cover with these questions yeah, just maybe one thing, you know, I, I, I would say uh, there is a big step uh, to, to start and being a contractor or freelancer, comparing uh, uh, being employed uh, by, by a local company. Um, but it really works to think about whether you start it or not. So... Um, I, I, I just would like to highlight that uh, if, you, if you do your job well right now in, with your current employee in this market, they're going to get back you like in a half year if you tell them honestly that, hey, I would like to try out the remote work, bring freelancer, um, and, and, and I would like to um, jump into that direction they may figure out a way to to still give you you know some work uh, as a contractor um but definitely if if it doesn't work out for you and 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 they like you and you like them there is a really high chance that they're going to get you back what i would like to say that from that perspective it's not it's not that risky because what happens if it doesn't work out well i go back to one of my previous employment job or I'm going to look for one in your country where I'm living and there is a high chance that I can find some but if you try it out you could experience a lot of new things you could learn a lot um, you could get involved into projects which is not even similar than you can find locally um, and you could have a lot of self-development on the way how you manage your time, what are your priorities, what is your true goal, uh, what's your like salary expectations, um, how good am I comparing the, uh, the you know, international talent pool. Um, yeah, just like what, what, I, what we didn't touch and I, I would say that uh, don't be scared. Uh, it's, it's very different than being employed um, maybe it's worth for you too or worth to think about whether you whether you start doing uh, being a contractor or became a contractor or became a freelancer yeah yeah thank you thank you so i think we can start the q a uh, session so